I'm Julie from the Houston Zoo, and I'm with the Bug House. And today, it's October, and it's time to talk more about bugs and have spooky fun with bugs. And we're here to remind you that bugs really aren't scary. Now, when you're walking around the Bug House during Zubu, you're going to notice that we have a lot of different kinds of beetles. And you might think to yourself, where did these beetles come from? How did we get these beetles? And today, we're excited to show you the recipe that we use to make our beetles. Yes, we make our beetles here at the Houston Zoo. To start with, we need beetle eggs. In this cup, you're going to see these are look like little round ping pong balls. And those are eggs from our giant flower beetles from Africa. So now we've got our eggs, and we're going to end up with baby beetles after this. After a couple weeks, we gotta find him, he's in the dirt here. We get little tiny larvae. Now, beetle babies are called larvae or grubs. I gotta find him here, he was very good at burrowing. So beetle larvae live in dirt and they eat the dirt. These are really good for our soil. These break down decaying plants and wood so we want them in our dirt. We do have beetles in Texas, and you can find beetle larvae in your own backyard while you're gardening. And that's okay, so you may be digging up dirt, looking to plant plants, and you might find little beetle larvae that look like this. If you find them, that's great. You can just put them back in the dirt and they will burrow down on their own. So now that we've got this little larva, we need to make him a nice new home. To do that, we gotta supply him with the right ingredients. Beetles eat dirt, the beetle larvae eat dirt, so we're gonna make our dirt. And uh, we've got some ingredients to make our dirt. They love wood, rotting wood. And so, you know, rotting wood can take a long time out in, the, in, the, out in nature. So we make our wood, and we're gonna start with grilling pellets. These you can buy in your local hardware store. We use the oak variety. They love oak. So uh, we take these, we mix it with water, and for the rotting process, the decaying process, we help it along a little bit. We use some wheat bread. This stuff you can buy in your local grocery store. And yeast, and yeast provides fermentation. So that's how we're going to make our soil. It takes a couple weeks, but then we get fantastic dirt. So this is our dirt. It's taken a couple weeks. You'll see it's a really nice reddish brown color. So this is fantastic for our little beetle larva here. And you can see he's already burrowed down. So we're going to find him. He's going to go in this bin. You'll see that this is a pretty large bin for such a little guy, but he's going to grow. So we're going to put him in here. We do supply them with a little bit of supplement. We give them a little extra protein. These are just fish food pellets. So we're going to pop those in there with him. We'll just cover them up. And now we have to wait. So our beetles here at the zoo, take many months to a couple years sometimes to grow up. So we have to have a little patience. After about five or six months, we take our nice little beetle larva off the shelf. Here he is. This is only about six months old now. You can see he's a lot bigger. So he's been living in this dirt. He's been eating it. You'll see his little mouth parts here. And he's got six little legs that help him burrow through the dirt real quickly. Now, he's gonna get ready to become an adult. And that's the next really cool process. Beetles, like butterflies, undergo complete metamorphosis. It means their body plan completely changes between the larva and the adult form. 
So the next thing he's gonna do, we'll let him go back in the dirt. A lot of people never get to see these, so this is kind of cool. This is also our uh, giant flower beetles from Africa. So we'll just let him go back in the dirt. What he's gonna do is he's gonna make a really protected shell around himself. He's gotta make a change to an adult. And there's a lot of things that happen. The legs have to spread out. They get longer. Sometimes the mouth parts change. He's gonna grow wings. He's gonna grow a hard shell that will cover his back called an elytra. And he may even change color. So he's got a lot of changes to make and he needs to be protected when he makes those. So he's going to make what we call a pupil cell. Now pupil cells are a pocket that they make by compressing the dirt around themselves. Now, some people see larva, fewer people see the cells. So you're in for a real treat. This is a pupil cell. It looks like a clot of dirt, but inside there's a beetle larva making big, huge changes to himself. He's growing those wings. He's growing different legs and maybe different mouth parts. If it's a male beetle, he may even be growing a new horn on his head. So a lot of changes taking place. He'll be in this state for about two to four months. We have to wait very patiently. Males take a little bit longer than females to make these changes. And I know that he's in here. I can feel him kind of roll around in here. When he's done, when he's made those changes, he'll come out of his pupil cell and we'll find an adult in a little bit. You'll see the adult, I promise. But you're going, well, there's something going on in here. What does it look like? Well, I said that people don't really get to see pupa very often or pupil cells very often. The pupa is inside here. And so even fewer people get to see the actual pupa. But you're in luck because we have a couple of our elephant beetles from South America that have pupated on the surface of their dirt. So you get to see the actual pupa. I'm gonna just set this over here for a moment. You guys can continue to see that. So, in here, here is a pair of elephant beetles from South America. These are the pupa. Here they are making their changes. So these are the, the uh, last sheds from them being a larva. They shed their skin like snakes and lizards. Now you'll see that the pupa moved a little bit. They do respond to stimulus. They can't walk, they can't run, they can't fly yet. So they can't really move any truly distance, but they can wiggle around. Now, these decided to pupate on the surface so we can see them. Normally they're underground. Normally people don't get to see this. So you're getting to see something super special. This is the female. So the head's up here. These are the legs. This part wrapped around her body those are going to be her wings and her elytra. The elytra is the shell that folds over their back. That's the really hard part. And that splits apart for the wings to spread out when they fly. This side is the male. This is the horn that he's growing on his head. That's how we can tell it's a male. The larva, they don't have the horn, so we don't know who's who until they're a pupa. We generally don't see this, so we generally don't know until they emerge, they come out as an adult. But you can see again, the legs and the wings wrapped over the body. So we're super excited. In about two to four months, these are gonna become adults. They're gonna be ready to come out as adults. In the pupil cell, in that dirt clot I showed you, once they, they're done making becoming an adult, they have to shed that skin just like they shed their, their larval skin. 
they'll shed this skin one last time and they'll be an adult beetle. But they're going to be floppy. They're not going to be really ready to, uh, to do much of anything. Those wings have to dry and tuck up underneath the hard shell, the elytra on their back. Their mouth parts kind of have to solidify in place. It'll take a couple weeks. Then they're going to use their legs and their heads to knock a little tiny hole in their pupil cell. And they'll break out of it and they'll crawl up to the surface and then they will be a fully functioning adult and ready to go on exhibit here at the bug house at the Houston Zoo. So, you've been waiting for our adults very patiently, just like we have. And now it's time to show you our adult beetles. I'm gonna tuck these guys back in so they're nice and protected. They are fairly fragile in this stage. So we place them very gently. We don't wanna rattle them around too much. So we've been waiting now for months and months. And this is what we get out of all of this. This guy here, I can bring him out. He's holding on to his log, which is kind of, this is what they do. This is a flower beetle from Africa. This is the male. He's got a beautiful horn here on his head. He's changed colors. He's red and blue. Here's his elytra that was wrapped around his body and his wings are underneath there. And along with that, we also have an elephant beetle from South America. She's holding on a little bit harder to her, uh, to the log. Elephant beetles are quite large. They're one of the largest beetles in the world. So they can hang on tight. Here she is. This is the elephant beetle from South America. She also has the elytra. Her wings are tucked up underneath it. She's got a pair of antenna. She's even got a fuzzy body. So she went under a lot of changes in that little pupil form. There are lots of things that we can do to help protect beetles, not only around the world, but here in our own backyards. One of the things that we do is we like to recycle. That's super important and that helps save beetle habitats. Also, if you can advocate for green spaces in your neighborhood, that really helps too, because beetles live even in our own backyards. And the more green space they have, the better it is. And also, if we can strive to reduce pesticide use, that's even better. Because pesticides affect all bug species, and we want to help protect beetles as well as all the other wonderful bugs that visit our backyards every day. I'm so happy that you guys were able to share with us how we make our beetles at the Houston Zoo and our bugs, and we hope that you're really happy and excited to visit the bug house along with the rest of the zoo during Zoo Boo.